Hello friends, in this video we will talk about measurement of seasonal variations. There are some popular methods of measuring seasonal variations as follows. Method of simple average, ratio to moving average method, ratio to trend method and linked average method. In this presentation we discuss only the method of simple average and the ratio to moving average method. Now the following steps are for method of simple average. Now step 1 average the unadjusted data by years and months. Find total of January, February etc. Divide each total by the number of years for which data are given. Obtain an average of monthly averages by dividing the total number of monthly averages by 12. In step 5 taking the average monthly averages as 100. Compute the percentage of various months monthly averages as follows. Now the formula is SI is equal to MI divided by average of month into 100 where SI is the seasonal index for ith month, ABGM is the average of monthly averages, MI is the monthly average of the ith month. Now we can see the example. Now consumption of refined oil, oil of 1 liter packets in one of the supermarket during 2005 to 2009 is given in table below. Find out the seasonal variation by the method of monthly averages. So we can see here. In the J J January 2005, total number of consumption is 190. In the same January 2009, it is 2201. Similarly, in December 2005, consumption is 300. And it is December 2009, it is 650 liters. Okay. Now, the table shows the calculation of method of simple average for the seasonal variation. Now, average of monthly average is what? AAVG. That is average of total month. So we can see here. So these are the averages. So how to get all these things? So to get the sum value, we have to add all this. Okay. So if you add all this, we can get the answer. It is 290. And similarly, if you add all this, we can get the summation. If you get all, if you add all this data, we can get for the month of March. Now, if you take the average, so the average of Jan, average of Jan value is what 196.2 and average of the February is 194.8. Similarly, average of March data is nothing but 187. So, these are the average consumption of all the months. Now, if you take the average of average, so if you take average of this data, okay, or if you take average of these data, okay, we can get the answer 213.07. Okay, now, now the monthly average is what? We have to add the summation of the month values divided by total five months, five years are there. And for the for the January month, it is 196.2. And average of monthly average is what? Average of all the average divided by total number of summation of all the average divided by total number of uh, year, months. So the answer is 213.07. So 213.07 is what? Average of monthly average that is AAVG. So we have to calculate the seasonal index for the ith month. For example, if it is a January. So average of average sale in January divided by average of average into 100. So as an index, seasonal index for the January month is what? 196.2. So 196.2 is nothing but the uh, 196.2 is nothing but the average sale of the January. And next, uh, the average of average that is 213.07. Okay, into 100 that is the 92.08. So the answer is what? 92.08. So 92.08. This is the seasonal index. 92.08 is the seasonal for January, 91.43 is the seasonal index of Feb. Similarly, 220.59 is the seasonal index of December month. Index for February month is what? 194.8 divided by 213.07 into 100 that is 91.43. And similarly, we have to calculate seasonal index for the other months. Next, we will talk about ratio to moving average method. A moving average of a time series is an average of fixed number of observations that moves as we progress down the series. The steps of ratio to moving average procedures for quarterly data are as follows. So in step 1, first calculate the 4 quarterly moving average that is FQMB series. 
Next, we have to step two, averaging every consecutive pairs. It is called center the moving averages, that is CMV. Step three, for every original data from the third data to the last but two, values are divided by the corresponding moving average data value and multiply by 100 to get the percentage of ratio to moving average, that is percentage RM. Step four, for each quarterly average, Calculate the percentage of ratio to moving average and now we have four quarterly index values. Step 5. Adjust the indexes so that their mean will be 100. This is done by multiplying each index value by 400 and divided by their sum. Now for example, quarterly sale data for 210 to 212 are given in table. Apply ratio to moving average method. So we can see these are the data. So, uh, three years are there, 210 to 212, and quarters are Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4, and sales are 10, 18, 9, 20. Okay. And uh, uh, these are the uh, calculations for the to get the ratio to moving average. Table shows the implementation of ratio to moving average method. So, we can see, we have to calculate. So, in this, in this particular table, we have to calculate so only these are given okay these are given we have to get the fqmv cmv and percentage rm where fqmv is the four quarterly moving average cmv is the centered moving average and percentage rm is the percentage ratio to moving average in step one to get the fqm value that is the four quarterly moving average we use the following calculations we get first FQMB value that is 14.25, 14.25 by averaging the first four data 18, 10, 18, 9, 20, 10, 18, 9, 20. Similarly to get the second FQM value that is 14.5 by averaging second to fifth data that is 18, 9, 2011, that is 18, 9, 2011. To get the third FQM value that is 14.7545. By averaging the third to sixth data, that is 9, 20, 11, 19, and so on. Okay. Step two to get the CMV value centered moving average, we, we use the following calculations. We get first CMV value 14.38, 14.38 by averaging the first two FQM value, that is 14.25 and 14.5. So if we average these two data, we can get 14.38. Similarly, to get the second CMB value, 14.63, 14.63 by averaging the second and third FQM value, that is second and third FQM value, that is 14.5 and 14.75 and so on. And uh, similarly, to, out, to get 14.5, we have to take average of these two data, that is 14.75 plus and 14.25 and so on. Step 3. To get percentage RM, we use the following calculations. To get the first percentage RM value that is 62.59, 62.59, the calculation is value of Q3 of 2010, okay, that is 9, that is 9, divided by the first CMV value that is 14.38, Okay, and multiply by 100. So, how to get the percentage RM value? For the so 9 divided by 14.38 into 100. Similarly, to get the second percentage RM value, that is 136.71, 136.71, the calculation is what? Q4 of 2010. Okay, so Q4 of 2010, that is 20, divided by the second CME value, that is 14.63. 14.63 into multiplied by 100 okay multiplied by 100 and so on so if you so 20 divided by 14.63 100 is what 136.71 similarly 17 divided by 13.88 into 100 is nothing but 122.48 step 4 for each quarter q1 to q4 so for each quarter q1 to q4 Calculate the average and now we have four quarterly index value. So 79.685. So Q1 in you have to rearrange the data. 
so q1 is what 75.86 so 75.86 and 83.51 so 75 75.86 and 83.51 for the year 2011 and 12 similarly for q2 you can see here 131.03 and 122.48 so you can see here 131.03 and 122.48 similarly for q3 62.59 and 47.04 okay so 62.59 and 47.04 and for q4 uh, you can see here 136.71 and 149.515 so it is uh, for q4 136.71 and 1 149.15 that is that is what we, we rearrange the quarter values for each and every year 2010 to 2010 next we'll talk about the sum so we have to take some sum of this and the average the sum of these values is what 159.837 average is what 79.68 similarly sum and average is what 253.51 and 126.75 respectively and sum and average for these two data are 109.63 and average is what 54.815 and so on and after that we have to calculate the si value now we'll see how to get how to get the si value Finally, we adjust the indexes so that their mean will be 100. This is done by multiplying each index by uh, by 400 and divided by their sum. To get the first SI value, we calculate average of Q1. Okay, so the average of Q1 is what? Average of Q1 is 79.685 into 400 divided by 404.185. So 404 is nothing but the summation of the average. So if you add all these values, we can get the answer 404.185. So to get the SI, SI value, average of Q1, average of Q1 divided by 404.184 into 100 is what? 78.86. Similarly, 126.755 divided by 404.185 into 400 is what? 125.44. So in this way, we can get the uh, index values. Okay, so uh, here in this way we can get all the SI values. So these are the R implementation. Okay, so through which we can uh, can we get the ratio to moving average. Okay, and if you plot the graph, we can get this graph, this type of graph, and this is the ratio to moving average using R language. Okay, and that is the end of this particular video. Thank you very much.